Welcome, Welcome back, back to, to Girls, Girls Rewatch, Rewatch, a podcast about girls, TV, and, and girls, girls on TV. <laughs> I'm Amelia Rotaller. <laughs> it's such a funny intro. I'm Evan Lazarus. <laughs> and get this, I'm not asexual. I know oh everybody was so scared, but I'm watching Nobody Wants This and Adam Brody and Kristen Bell really oh making magic. Oh my God, magic. is it not hot? I like all these TV shows where 40-somethings play 30-somethings trying to act like 20-somethings. It's so I, beautiful. The way this TV show is written as if Darren Starr got an email in 20, tw- in 2003 being yeah. like, here's what's happening in 2024. <laughs> Can you write a show b- about that? And he's like plugging and playing. Like, but with the best chemistry you've ever seen two actors slash characters ever have on screen. Kristen Bell and Dave Rogowski, I'll die for you. Adam Brody. Yes. Sorry, I just said the first and last name of his character in Gilmore Girls. What the hell? We actually talked about it a little bit last podcast. Dude, okay, yeah, it's on our hearts and minds. It's on our hearts and minds. It's really like that show is hot. That show is hot. It's clinically hot. In a way that Broad City is not. No, there's no Today sexual. is Garol Yogurt Day. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, should we do but a synopsis this- really quick? You, you want to just plug it in? Um, I no, like when I re- you read it at two times speed. Yeah, and my pitch goes up really yeah. high. It's like, ready, set, go. We're, so, uh, welcome back to the podcast. If you're new in town, we're, we rewatched All of Girls, but now we're rewatching Broad City. And today we're covering season one, episode three, which, what is it called? Working Girls. Yeah, Working Girls. And this is a super quick synopsis just to refresh your memory. Okay, ready, set, go. We've got a cold open of Abby's tough day at work cleaning toilets and trying to work on her art at night before doing her lovely bedtime routine. And then Alana is, of course, taking a nap at work, smoking weed at work, and then partying the night away. And she goes to bed when she gets punched in the face. Four and three and two and one, one. (laughs) Then... The meat of the episode, right? Abby's neighbor, Jeremy, asked if she'd sign for his package while he's gone. And Abby calls out sick of work just so she can be home. But then she misses the package by like 10 minutes. And so she must go to the delivery center in North Brother Island. But when she fails to bring proper ID, she has to get Bevers to bring two pieces of Jeremy's mail and pretend to be Jeremy. But Bevers, of course, accidentally forgets. Abby feels terrible, but Bevers takes full responsibility when Jeremy gets back. And Jeremy is like, oh, my God, we should grab dinner. But with Bevers. But with Bevers, (laughs) so it's hell every day. (laughs) Meanwhile, Alana ditches deals, deals, deals to cover at the Lindy Lodi temp agency. Linda is, of course, played by Rachel Dratch, and she ends up walking a bunch of dogs around town, and one gets sick because she lets it eat chocolate, so she must take it to the vet, and the vet is played by Janine Garofalo. And they get the dog's stomach pumped. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm doing it in slow motion No, you're doing today. a great job. Anyway, she tries to get dog Xanax and asks the vet to check her hammer. This is an amazing episode for female comedians. This is, uh, we said, let's get these girl, let's get these working female comedians On to work. Dark. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> um, this episode, I didn't know it was episode three. It's so clear. Like, this is one of those episodes I always think about whenever oh, my USPS package. Oh, I know. It really package, sticks out in your head. Yeah. But Every time you're UP. Well, don't we revisit North Brother Island? Do we go back to North Brother Island? I can't remember. Have you ever been? It's not real. Okay. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what? how was your week before we get our guest in here? Tell me everything, girl. Um, my week's been really interesting and so many things are so personal to me, but I can share that I thought I was... I couldn't tell. Sometimes when someone's in an open relationship, you can't tell when they ask you to hang out to take four trains and meet them where they are. Um, if they're asking you out on a date or just to hang out as friends. And it, and it was friends. Um, <laughs> so it on ended Saturday. with me sleeping in Prospect Park for two hours afterwards because I was waiting to go to a house warming party nearby. And I couldn't that go all the we way back home because it was three, four trains away. Why were we three hours early to a house warming? <laughs> and, then I, um, and then I walked around all of Prospect Heights, like truly almost in tears, listening to A Little Life and being like, why am I so sad? Because I'm reading a book about like a woman who writes like torturous stories about gay men. Um uh, Hannah, Hannah, <laughs> no, <the> editor. <laughs> no, Hannah, who is like the New York Times magazine editor, oh. and she like writes all these books about like she turns like gay men into little paper dolls and then tortures them for like her own pleasure. And like, of course, I'm gonna read that. Oh my god, you know, I thought I had read every self help book there is. It's not self help. I know, but <laughs> I just started a new self help book. Okay, <laughs> amazing pivot. It's called Finding <clears throat> Your North Star. Oh, give us one to two takeaways. Um, so you have learned social behaviors and then you have your essential self and basically oh you've got to unlearn the social <clears throat> like things you were taught so you can find your North star. Oh, I could have guessed that. Honestly, <laughs> I'm reading it because I was listening to an episode of Las Culturistas from 2018 with Tammy Sager. And she was like, I read this book and it fixed everything. Is it fixing? 
Well, um, no, actually, yes. it's not fixing me. I'm, I was in a good mood prior to the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've turned a new leaf. I'm no longer sad. I decided my life is actually epic sauce. <laughs> well, cause you were telling me last night, your life has been so much better since you discovered alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so for so long, all summer long, I was like, am I sober curious or should I go full force into alcoholism? And by the way, you yeah, have to choose. Really, I don't even know if it's funny to joke about, but here we are. <laughs> I know. Is this even a lot? Here's the thing. Like I, I, I am prone to black and white thinking and in New York City like if you're a girl who drinks then you do have to have like 30 drinks a week just like if you're yeah, out right. on the town if that's you're just doing, like you're, not, you're an all or nothing kind of girl yeah and it's not even binge drinking to me because it's like if you start hanging out with somebody at a happy hour at 5 and then you're at a party till 2am and you have like one drink every hour and a half that seems really reasonable but, but then it adds up to like <laughs> 8 drinks in a night and apparently more than 2 is alcoholism <laughs> I googled it I need a term is so loose for alcoholism it's like if I remember one time I was in college and we, this is not actually not so related, but one time I was in college, there was so much alcohol inside a frat house and all the windows were sealed because they didn't want the sound getting out, um, that all the alcohol kind of dissolved into the air. And when the police came to shut down the party, the breathalyzer immediately went off. So everyone was charged with underage drinking. Um, but my one friend pretended to be a Russian ambassador's daughter and only <laughs> <laughs> And only spoke in like f- <laughs> like the very few Russian words they knew. To the, to what? Because you can't arrest um, a ambas- Russian ambassador's daughter. Yeah, because they have immunity to law when you're part of like when you're an ambassador. Like they. Oh. Yeah. So um, they pretend to be a Russian ambassador's daughter, so they want to go to jail and have to do community service like everyone else. Um, but then the jig got caught because they like like couldn't- Rory Gilmore. Like Rory Gilmore. <laughs> 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 gotta get it in the <laughs> intro anyways we've got to cut to our guys we've been talking on and on for no reason wait i can't wait to get her because she does live in this house she, kira you can come, kira, downstairs, time to come downstairs girl cross is off joining us on the couch is the dearest dearest girl oh we know God. and love her kira sullivan hey, yeah it, it, this is actually a very full circle moment to be back on the pod because it was april of last i think april 2023 was it uh-huh. this is when we met when i go on the girls podcast and after that episode <laughs> evan dms me and is like amelia and i are obsessed with you <laughs> yeah and then we literally i don't know how it happened we just all became very fast friends um when it's right it's right when it's right it's right and it's so it's so right here oh my ah! god that's why we all wore the same outfit today. yeah <laughs> if you're on the audio version i just want you to know that we're all in light wash jeans mm-hmm. and a black top yeah i'm wearing my pants like kira hates i love where i call my they're my great brit n pants because i painted um the union jack on the back <laughs> evan comes into my room the other day and he goes do, do you want to see red and I said, what? <laughs> they go, do you want to see red? And I went, huh? They turn around. They show me the Union Jack paints it on their pants. I said, get that out of my She's sight. a famous Ireland lover. Right now. Yeah, it was red, but it's also blue and white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I went to Ireland for 18 hours and I thought of you. That's such a high that's such a high compliment thank you yeah it's so beautiful shout out to the proud nation of ireland yeah but okay let's get into the damn podcast kira Mm -hmm. what's your deal 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 with broad city i watched all of it on hulu i believe with ads which takes (laughs) a lot of commitment to like watch a a show through when you are going through ads um i think it was just something that like my friends were watching and i needed like a funny show and i think i watched it in college when i was living in new york so it was very apt it was very relatable Mm. love and before we dive into the broad and butter of season one episode three we've got to ask you girl what what girl girl are are you you? i feel like you guys know the answer to this it's so obvious right should we all say it one two three ready one One, two two, three three, abby Abby. that's how i think gang right here's the thing abby you're not like abby i know but abby doesn't all. blow dry her hair but for i'm today. not like you're Ilana. not alana here's the thing about abby and i think it's really showcased in this episode life is tough on that girl <laughs> life is not tough you're you're abby in yeah, this episode and like, <laughs> honestly honestly even during okay this is gonna sound so mean but it's really not like during the um cold open when it's like those two um, and Abby's just like going through a hell on one side. I was like, that's Amelia. I was like, <laughs> the way, that's, the way that's I- what Amelia goes through every single day. Like you are 
so Abby and that like the way life hits you is ridiculous it's like I'm fighting for my life every day this is what I felt watching the episode cold open which by the way basically it's just showing a day in the life of Abby and a day in the life of Alana split screen and Alana's like in a flow state chilling sleeping at work vibing partying and Abby is like her hair is in the toilet she's like fighting for her life at the gym like Bevers (laughs) is being crazy for me that split screen was like the difference between being 23 and 26 because at 23, mm. everything is so effortless. Like, even though it's hard, it's like you're, you do, the responsibilities of the world don't necessarily lay on your shoulders in the same way when you're 26. And yeah, three years, a lot can happen. Um, Like, you are going to the club when you're 23 on a Friday or, or not a Friday, on a Tuesday. And someone might punch you in the face. But you're going to go to deal till seals the next day. Yeah, I think maybe this is why I, ha- I didn't like... Because I love Broad City. I've watched the whole show. Uh-huh. But I think maybe the reason why, like, it, like, it's, like, not, like, one of my favorite shows of all time is I'm genuinely not like either of the characters Mm. which is actually really fun sometimes like sometimes it's really nice to like watch a show and none of the characters you're not watching game of thrones being like oh my god i'm such a khaleesi like yeah i am (laughs) yeah i am (laughs) what do you mean that's exactly what i'm doing (laughs) girl what girl are you i'm daenerys targaryen (laughs) first of her name (laughs) i wish that i wish a game of thrones rewatch podcast had the question girl what girl are you girl what girl girl are you we'll we'll dm them and ask them to add it game what throne are you throne what game are you (laughs) what house are you like house star oh that's lannister literally we should sit down and there should be girly pops them. doing uh game of thrones rewatch we're doing you're, you're, you this won't mean anything to them because they don't watch game of thrones you are house tyrell of high garden mm. you hmm. is is that it's hot a girl amelia sure. in it she um amelie what's her name who's amelie the brunette <laughs> the hot brunette that's famous from game of thrones no, khaleesi you're house of dragon no you're talking that's about blonde. i think you're talking about marjorie tyrell yeah no high tower marjorie terrell of oh my god we're gonna have to cut this whole section yeah, this i know by the way okay girl what girl are you none of them none of them <laughs> yeah and now you guys ask me okay what girl, girl are you no, oh it's more fun if we get to do it in unison okay girl, girl what, what girl, girl are you, you? Thank you for asking. In this episode, I am Lindy Lodi, played by Rachel Dratch. Oh, right. A temp, oh, okay. The, the owner of a temp agency. Because I am always getting my hair cut and being like, uh, do whatever. I pay You're like, very tw- trusting a stranger. I pay $12 in Chinatown and I'm like, whatever you need to do. And then, of course, like, I'm you're um alana um <laughs> eating the chocolates in the jar and i'm like now i have to count them from the beginning that's that's actually a really perfect example of your dynamic yeah that exact scene i was like this is about this song's about us <laughs> <laughs> you 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 two feel very abby and alana uh, alana and abby Cody. yeah but girl what girl are you i okay so i have done a lot of internships i did about eight internships before i entered the full workforce that's crazy that's (laughs) crazy so the temp agency of it all really resonates with me because i both worked in a chocolate factory and i worked for dogs what do you mean you worked in a chocolate i remember the chocolate factory yeah i worked for um an emporium no no factory (laughs) okay and um at a place called industry city in the deepest part of brooklyn next to a costco which is very north brother island Wow, yeah. Um, so that actually is very... That rings true. Well, I was truly talking about the other day, but it's like they were all... It was like four gay men essentially owned this chocolate factory, but I was too scared to come out to them at 20, even though I was out in college, because there's something about coming out to your other gay men where it's like, it has to mean something. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like they're going to ask me about cruising spots around New York City. I have to stay in the closet. Oh, I see. <laughs> they're going to all be in love with me and I'm hit on my... I'm too scared to I was like, what was going through my head? <laughs> I'm too scared to come out to the elder queers at the chocolate like, factory is a crazy like, sentence. What if they want to kiss me? <laughs> what if they want to kiss me? <laughs> <laughs> so every day I travel two hours there, two hours back home um, through Metro North and MTA uh, to go work in the farthest part of Brooklyn at a chocolate factory owned by gay men in a place called Industry City next to a Costco. Brutal. It's an amazing sentence. Yeah. All, all, all of about. the sentences you two say about your past and your lore are really... <laughs> every time Evan and Amelia tell me something about their life, I re- have to repeat it back to them <laughs> so they understand how insane it sounds. Um, we oh, have wow. really normal backgrounds. Yeah, I think... No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cut to our first break. And when we get back, we are diving straight into the episode. 
and we're back hey. hey oh my god so let's get into it abby's work situation alana's work situation this episode is called working girls i think this is the first episode so far where the two aren't on an adventure together they're in, they're in different but yeah, they only they get cross. one facetime one facetime call one regular phone call. one parking one 10 second parking yeah their paths are diverging. They're going on separate quests. That's a real A and B plot. Yeah. Well, I think this episode does an amazing job because it's still early days of establishing like who each of these characters are. So Abby is like low status, not doing well at work. And Alana's high status, killing at work, amazing at taking a nap, getting dress coded. Killing and then, it at work. I don't, yeah, I don't know if we would say killing uh, it at work. We all have different definitions. When Chris Gethard is like nervous and like blush, bashful, like <laughs> trying to like set a boundary with Alana, that's awesome. Well, I think it's because some men are not used to confident women and when a confident woman enters your space, they have no idea how to react so their only way is to shut down completely. That's and that's true. what's happening right there. I think it's, I think it's not necessarily that... I think it's actually a really fun take on the like parallel opposite kind of arc because usually it's like one person's thriving at work and one person's like uh, horrible at their job. But in this one, it's actually just that one person doesn't give a shit and one person cares so, so, so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's not like, it's not like Alana's good at her job. It's just that she genuinely could not care less. Yeah. yeah and that, th- and, and that's not harming her. And that's ultimately the secret to happiness. <laughs> yeah. It's to not care about your job. <laughs> she Damn. is a mogul, a la Bethany Frankel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. She lists out moguls. <laughs> Jay-Z. Think, and- well, I do like the concept because... What this episode does an amazing job is, but during COVID, I don't know if you guys remember, but a lot of coders were taking on three jobs at once because they got to work from home and they can code way faster than the work they were given. We've all seen that TikTok. Right. But Alana kind of invented that by doing temp job on top of temp job, top of regular job, a la Bethany Frankel. A la Bethany Frankel. It's so like Abby would never be like, oh, I'm getting dress coded and in trouble at work. Let me go do another job and then let me go do another job. There was, I think, also the reason why Abby reminded. I think also why Abby reminds me of you specifically is the namaste of it all. <laughs> and the cold cut when she goes namaste. Like, the because you guys have to understand, Amy is always coming up to me and being like, being like, I'm going to a yoga class. <laughs> or you're, you're so good about she like, class card self-improvement in a way that I... Abby's reading the self-help book on the subway, I too. I think that's the thing is I am Alana in the sense that I do not care about self-improvement that is one thing that actually abby and i have you're good where you are yeah oh Mm -hmm. that's beautiful well i do like the sequence in the beginning where abby with her self-help book actually bonds with another man on the subway about her self-help book and then he bullies her and then he kind of turns around and bullies her meanwhile a lot of drooling on a woman (laughs) 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 oh they really do have fun it is fun to see um Trey's character when so this is Abby's second time getting out of work in three episodes. I know. Perfect. Just to be clear, how many diseases does that girl fall upon? I don't know, but the way Trey is like, you've got to do cellular confusion. Okay, cellular confusion. <laughs> that that was the best. That was the best part. That I think that was my favorite line is cellular confusion. And then he's like, and you just got to veg out with Netflix and Smallville. It starts slow, but you got to watch it, all a, of it. It's a great build. <laughs> that's what he says. That was, that's the thing is I rewatching it. There's a lot of very little lines that I found very funny. I forgot how many lines. I mean, even like we've only been posting clips of the show on TikTok for a week. But the amount of people commenting like, damn, this show was funny. Mm-hmm. Like they are giving us, the folks. they are serving us. Th- yeah, they're serving us a what's it called? When a platter? Have, no, when you have to like um hors d'oeuvres. No, and papers. Cut it, cut it all. But a pancake. It's when someone like serves <laughs> you and it's a subpoena. Oh, getting like served for like yeah. a court. So yeah, okay, but I don't even care about that. Have you ever been given insane advice to heal one of your illnesses before? Have you ever given cellular like, oh, confusion? Oh, okay. Well, um, my grammar. Uh, and please explain what that is to the audience. Is that Irish for grandma? Is. No, I don't even think it's Irish. My dad just asked, like, what do you want to be called? And she said, Grammaire. I don't, I think it might be but French. Who? Uh, that's my grandma. <laughs> sorry. My, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> my Grammaire is my grandma, born and raised in the north of Ireland. Mm-hmm. And when she, my dad was sick as a kid, she would give him a shot of whiskey to kill the bacteria. 
Oh, oh, I've heard the classic like alcohol fix it. Yeah, which is very which is very on brand for the Irish. <laughs> but um you you see the logic to it, but it, it just does bad germs. It does kill bad germs, but it just doesn't really work like that, it's you know. It's so yeah. interesting cuz my grammar personally when I'm ill just sends me memes about cats. You don't have a grammar. You have a grandma. <laughs> don't, the don't put a label on her. Wait, 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 wait well, what she, do you call Actually it? she said she never wanted to be called grandma cuz that's my other grandma's name, so she goes by Ina. Oh, that's very really cute. Yeah. yeah. My grandma wanted to be called grandma, but my grandpa did not like the name grandpa. He was like, just call me Bill. So my whole childhood, I was like, I'm going to my grandma and Bill's house. <laughs> Does that just sound like yeah, your I grandma do. had a boyfriend named Bill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the conversation around like, you because no one, you never meet someone that calls both their grandma and grandma. There's always grandma and then there's someone else. I actually don't have any grandma. It's a Nana and grandma. Period. I'm like, that's your Game of Thrones house, I think. That's my Game of Thrones house. (laughs) But other than that, other than that, no one gives me any kind of weird advice because I think they also know that I'm not receptive to that kind of advice. But Amelia's full of weird advice. Anytime I'm sick, she's like, don't use toothpaste twice. I'm like, what could that possibly mean? (laughs) Right, whereas Amelia would never say that to me because she knows that I I wouldn't... I don't bother with Kira. I I would not be receptive. I would actually be hostile to that. (laughs) Can I actually just say, on Saturday, I went to two bars for different people's birthdays and I, I treated it like it was like a rapid fire life coaching session for every girl at the event. And the way I was like serving up life advice at like 2 a.m. at a taco bar being like, and this is what you need to do in the morning to really get your day out started on the right foot. I think this is okay. I think that's maybe why we're such good friends, because I feel like you're the life coach to everyone else but then sometimes what was the thing that i said to you we were, we were in the <laughs> no no when it wasn't the lighthouse thing <laughs> it was we were in the but like we always joke that amelia's new knowledge and i'm old wisdom yeah <laughs> because sometimes the way i talk is just kind of i'm really into lore and myths it's just the vocabulary you have an ancient intuition i have an ancient intuition this is true what was the thing we were in blinkies and i said something to you where you were like what and i said i had to say it like seven times oh my god what was it i think it was i turned to you and i was like don't let anyone tell you what your nature is you were like (laughs) you were like what (laughs) and i had to repeat it and she was like oh my god (laughs) i had to say i run around this town every day begging somebody to tell me any advice (laughs) and no one will but kira yeah except for it's like riddles <laughs> but here is it's, it's ancient riddles that i have to then uh, figure it's ancient out ancient riddles well. and proverbs that i will not expound upon <laughs> that yeah. I, re- I that i refuse to explain you're like you just need to find your sheep and i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> anyways the meat of this episode is that abby has such a big crush on jeremy that she would go to the ends of the earth north brother island to try and receive a package just so he can like see her in a positive right. light one interesting through line between girls and broad city adam famously always working with wood always Mm. working with wood and if you'll remember the reason why jeremy can't pick up his package is he's picking up planks of wood and and i hate to bring this into it planks of salvage wood this into it what if we think about sex in the city for a second as well aiden aiden but also i think that maybe broad city and girls if they came around came out around a similar time maybe there was something with millennial men where like the fuckboy version of a millennial man was like an indie guy who was really into woodworking. Yeah, that's working. a West End Caleb. Right? But uh-huh. we don't really have that anymore. No, we no, do. No, we don't have woodwork. No, no, not a woodworker. This is what I'm going to say. A woodworker is now a TikToker. They want to do something creative. It is that same impulse. Like, it's someone who's, like, making, like, weird art through a TikTok lens. I'm seeing this every day. That's I, what we call a classic gay boyfriend I for think straight girls. I think the woodworkers are now DJs. What is the Jeremy of the world today? Like, yeah, like, if you were writing Jeremy, what would he be doing? What would a creative pursuit be? Because now it wouldn't be, like, I'm going to get planks of salvage wood from, like... Podcaster. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be something... <clears throat> he built carpets. sets. He's tufting. Tufting. Tufting might be good, actually. <laughs> Tufting. Tufting. He's tufting. He's tufting carpets to put on his wall. Well, Jeremy is so, like, the millennial, like, I make my own kombucha guy. Yeah. Like, he's so whatever. Um, Jay Cornell last week was predicting that the package that he's receiving is his, um, like, personalized dildo. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> of course. <clears throat> what are they called again? Agusha? 
don't you're, look at me. I don't know. You're thinking gua sha, which is crazy. <laughs> gua sha is a... <laughs> it's like a... Shin, a shinjo. A shinjo, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what a personalized dildo is? And this, that's what and this. His, that's my shinjo. You melted oh, it. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. yeah shinjo. But how, what have you guys done for your crush? What's the craziest thing you've ever done because you had a crush on somebody? Just to like make yourself in the same location or like be seen positively by them. One time I went on his Spotify account I found his current playlist. <laughs> I chose a song off of it and I posted it to my Instagram story. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's really normal. And but that was the only time I did it because that's I, a modern day woodworker. Because I immediately was like, I feel crazy now, and then I never <laughs> did it again. <laughs> but like we've all done. Yeah, I went and dated a guy sort. who wouldn't be seen outside with me. We've all done crazy things. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Every story is beautiful. Sometimes you'll date a guy who goes to a different college in the same city, and you're willing to date him by just staying indoors with him. Just staying indoors. <laughs> I think I just got really into likes and retweets on Twitter. On their, on like, your crush's I would, Twitter? Yeah, like I would stalk their likes um, just to see what they liked. So oh, then yeah. I could like what they like. The really normal thing. No, that's thing. classic. Well, also it's one of those things of you end up doing crazy things because like even just interacting them, interacting with them and at all on social media just gives you such a dopamine rush. Like when you're checking to see if they saw your story, oh, literally, and they see it, and your brain's like, yes. I'm just like I've been like, oh, I have a crush, and I literally have to mute them because I'm like, I don't want to see this. Like it's too much. Yeah, you have a business brain. <laughs> like I'll be like stalking them, stalking all their tweets. And then I'm like, this is too much. Like you're blocked because I can't let you control my life like this. It right. really does make you feel crazy. Yeah. If the Jeremy in my life asked me to um, stay in my house for six hours to wait for a package for him, I would do it. I would. Well, you know how much I'm home anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's actually not even a big ass. I know. I girl, what girl are you? Your Bevers being like, I'm here tomorrow. I'm here the next day. I'm, I'm here not the next Bevers. day. Actually, I will say that Bevers is maybe one of the reasons why I haven't rewatched the show because every scene he's in, I cannot stand him. I know. We were just talking about this. We hate Bevers, especially early days. It's just like this episode was actually a little bit painful to watch because Abby is going through so much and everything just happens so nicely for Bevers. The only saving grace is when Abby kicks the rotisserie chicken into the sky. I will say that I recently tweeted about how when I was a kid, I like had to stop watching Phineas and Ferb because Candace not being believed oh, yeah. made me so angry. Like it really <clears throat> upset me. And I thought it was just like maybe a weird, but I've always like, I've never liked those kinds of plots. They've always frustrated me. Yeah. And a couple people tweeted back being like, do you have autism or ADHD by chance? And I was like, I have ADHD. And then I looked it up and this is crazy. People with ADHD and sometimes autism have a thing called high justice sensitivity. <laughs> it's real. It's a real thing. Look it up right now. Wait, high justice wait, wait. sensitivity is your whole personality. Wait, yeah. Verse. yeah, no. So like the high justice sensitivity is like Abby telling Bevers to like get out and him always being there is like so unjust, you know? Like, it's so crazy and frustrating to me, but it definitely ties back to, like, the Candace of it all as well. Like, plots in which, like, one person gets away with everything. And in Phineas and Ferb, it's even harder because it's two boys. Yeah, but, like, the fact that Be the fact that Bevers never, like, Abby never gets justice. This man... He just is the episode there. ends with Bevers getting a wonderful dinner with Jeremy, <laughs> living yeah, Abby's it. dream. But I think it's genuinely this thing of like, I always thought that I was just like into justice because I'm the Libra, um, the scales, which also may be part of it if some people enjoy astrology. But um, it really is a thing where it's like sometimes people with ADHD like just get really, really frustrated when th things feel unjust and it is at the point with Bevers where like I, I actually cannot enjoy a scene <laughs> that Bevers is in because oh he makes me so angry. One of the like most frequent stress genes I have is like me trying to get like me telling someone to like get the fuck out of my room and they don't leave. So that's also <laughs> like that that's is like, so by the Bevers. Way, that's me in your room every single day. <laughs> <laughs> Bevers is literally the actual personification 
of my You're- sleep paralysis demon that is crazy okay let's talk about abby's journey to north brother island so the plot line of sure we're talking about abby going to the ends of the earth for her crush but we're also diving into the new york situation or this might happen in uh, small towns of (laughs) getting a package delivered that you have to sign for and if you're not there to sign it it will take three years to be able to get this this package very 2014 problem you have to say that because today when you order something on Amazon, I tried to order snail mucus today on Amazon. It had a six hour delivery window. What did you try to order? Snail mucus. For who? My skin. Okay. Uh, expound on that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's um. There was a craze last year where everyone was using snail mucin for their skin to like help give it a luster what is and a it, shine. What does it do for your skin? It's a it's a, a serum, so it makes your skin shinier. When you don't sign for a package, what happens? So this happened when I ordered a pair of shoes from Steve Madden when I first moved here. I missed the package the first day, and I was like, "Can I just go pick it up from a pickup center?" And they were like, "So they are actually going to try and deliver it two more times." And on the third time, then you can go pick it up from a pickup center. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be home for either of these next delivery windows either. So what if we all made less work happen? I'm on the phone with somebody. I'm on the phone with fucking who who was in it? Connor Radcliffe. That was the guy in this episode. Um, (laughs) The guy Abby calls at the package place who's watching TV. So then it's like three days and then you go to the pickup center and then it's like you have to prove you're you. Like it's a whole thing. It's like why is package delivery so hard in this town? I don't ever want to go to a pickup center. It's because it's a 9-11 post world we're living in. And packages changed? Packages changed. I'm sure pre-9-11 you could walk into any, any pickup center and be like, it's me. And they say, Gerald would just believe you. But now in a post 9-11 world, you have to bring two pieces of mail just to prove who you Carol, are. Carol, I think, is the funniest joke of the whole thing. That It's yeah. Carol with a G. Well, you know, <laughs> the one thing that Lena Dunham and Abby and Lana have the strongest connection is using amazing names. Amazing names. They are so good at names. I love when Alana's at the temp agency, right? And Abby calls and is like, so basically a huge development in my love life is I'm waiting to sign for a package for my crush. And Alana's like, package okay he's about to deliver you his package no and that's just, <laughs> this is what i tell people all the time and this is if someone likes my story it's like they're obsessed with me literally this is like the dance of desire it's beginning i cannot begin to describe like how many facetimes i've had with friends where they're like um so i walk past them in the street so basically they like want to fuck me tonight yeah they're like you you need to file a restraining order well one thing i'm really noticing in our our modern zeitgeist that it's so much harder to do a favor for someone like in this situation if jeremy was actually waiting for a package he could have sent it to an amazon locker literally and this is what it all is like the millennial thing where we don't like to ask for help we hire movers we hire cleaners we hire this we hire this we hire this we we lost the community because of capitalism no taking their yeah. car and bring it to an airport for a friend Bring back picking your friend up from JFK. I feel like I do show up for my friends when they need them. No, you show up. My friend like broke their foot and they were moving. And I went over to their apartment. They like called me up out of the blue. And I was instantly like, yeah, of course. I literally, it was like a walk up too. I had to like lug like six huge things of trash like up and down for them because they had a broken foot. And I was like, they can't do it alone. Oh, yes. Yeah, Sab Wait, said that this week. You're so sweet. Well, no, but like, it's like, that's not really a sweet thing to do. It's just like, yeah, like if you need help and you can't I'm do so it. I'm so bad at asking for help because when I asked for help as a kid, no one w- would. So I it like made me be like, oh, I could never ask anyone for anything. And I remember like being in therapy, being like, I just want to be rich enough that I never have to ask anybody for help ever again. And she was like, so, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, uh-oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. You she should- starts furiously writing on her notepad. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it sounds like you actually should figure out the love and support of a community that could exist. But that's actually a really great sentence to say because that's something a therapist can really grab on to and diagnose you immediately like there are signature lines that people with certain um like uh going through some complexes complexes that thank you for that word 
Or it's like there's lines which like give an example and somehow you picked out an exact example sentence that would be like, oh, that's a red flag. I'm going to be honest. I'm amazing at being a good client to a therapist. Like I'm going to feed them exactly what they could jump on. Yeah, right. Your yeah. clinical example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving example A in the textbook. Right. <laughs> yeah, just for them. But There's not nuance. <laughs> yeah. But it is nice signing for a package. I've never done that for another person. For I don't even know how you could. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's actually allowed. It's not legal. Legally. Legally. Uh, and Amazon lockers. Yeah, I don't have an Amazon locker. Do you guys? You don't? No one? Okay, so the thing is, no one has an Amazon locker. It's there when you need it. Okay, I see. So you can just be like, hey, this package, can you put it in an Amazon locker? Yeah, my mom's always talking to me about Amazon lockers. It's like a huge part of like her lifestyle. It's her lifestyle, It's like the yeah. concept of Redbubble back in the day for you to pick up a movie, but instead you're putting your package in there. Red you No, know, I understand what it is. I just Sorry, didn't know box. anyone has I did Red Bubble, this <clears throat> sticker website. Um, yeah, no, I feel like I very much am Alana in that situation where I'm like, yeah, he's obsessed with you. These are the signs. Yeah, well, I mean, I've talked to you about your crushes before and they'll that's, do something really normal and you'll be like, so that's definitely a thing. Right. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, it is. But you know what? Okay, weirdly enough, it always ends up being a thing. Women really read into like meta messaging when like dating and stuff. And I actually do as well. And that's a big part of my non-binary journey. Um, <laughs> but like when dating, like small <laughs> little things really are way more impactful for men. Where men are for women, where men, men are so straightforward, like their intentions are usually what they are saying. But women love a meta message. Um, so that's like actually a big difference in why women are so communicative around dating. Like we will all analyze each other's texts. If I get a weird text from a guy, I will send it to about 14 of my friends get their opinions on that matter. A guy would never do that. Literally, you, you get... It's a round table. It's, it's a round it, it's, table. It's a red table talk where everyone... Amy Schumer is no, there. The <laughs> Lisa Ray is there. No, the best is when you... you Every girl in the group chat starts sending a voice memo. With oh, their yeah, take, being like, this is what's going on. And you hear... That actually happened just yesterday. My friend texted in the girls' group chat. Everyone start sending their voice memos. My other friend, Jesse sends her voice memo. Her roommate is chiming in. I send my voice memo. <laughs> Sabrina's chiming yeah. in. Yeah. Like, that's the thing is you get everyone in their the community. All, you have a community of girls immediately there. Well, this was happening to me literally yesterday. I was getting texts. I couldn't necessarily think of an amazing response to send back. I'm, I'm now crowdfunding my friends, my funny friends to be like, hey, what are four pitches of ideas that I could send back in messaging just so I can keep up with this person in tax form? Yeah, oh, Evan, yes. Evan's <laughs> currently texting somebody who's a good texter and the way and the fast, entire... Com- a fast, good fast, texter. Good That's texter. actually terrifying. They're one of the most lethal texters of all time. I'm, I'm having to get my friends and family to all pitch in. To all, um, yeah. like, ghost, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> LOL. I love, I love the way, like, they explore, like, that, like, reading into signs, but it is, like, guys never say what they mean like when people are like if he wanted to he would no, no that's not true people never do what they want well new york city famously was just named the hardest city in america to date in wow uh-huh because there's so many options here and everything's like so face past pace so the conversations that bevers and jeremy have at the restaurant where bevers is where jeremy is now asking bevers like is there one girl you know in the city that i could date it's like well bevers has now experienced every single woman on earth he's actually dating somehow the best woman on earth who's like never there pays for his lifestyle and like he can be somehow a sugar baby and be all like that. Um, so it's like, of course, no one he could ever suggest that Jeremy will be as good as the roommate not in the house. I will say two things. Number one, that is my favorite line read of the entire episode is when he goes, well, actually, no, <laughs> that's my favorite line. Read. But also it, people talk about like we've lost third spaces. We've lost mm. the kind of community centered dating. Of, I rewatched. Harry met Sally when Harry met Sally recently it's fall obviously it's yeah. that time of the year mm-hmm. and very famously the second Sally becomes single Carrie Fisher pulls out a Rolodex of men starts going through them and goes who can I set you up with and this actually like used to be a thing back in the day like my parents got set up too like really yeah because there was no social media or like hinge apps. and there were no apps or anything so if you had a single friend that was like looking to date like you actually genuinely did try to set you like people genuinely tried to set their friends up with their other mutual friends. Oh my gosh. And I will say that I think losing that has devastated dating for our generation because now, now if I complain to you, like if we were living in 1989 
and I said, okay, oh my God, Swift. I really want a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Like I hate being single. <laughs> you would go, oh, um, I might have someone for you. Like, let right. me get back to you. Whereas now, if I say that to you now, you I literally you, said get back on. Hinge. Yeah, you would say get back on hinge. We've lost a culture of blind dates. Yeah, it has to be said. Also, it's not around even all like so many of the successful relationships I know they met through mutual friends. Yeah. So like, even if it's not like mm-hmm. a setup, there's clearly something there where like, I think that people need to start setting their friends up on dates. And it's like, I know you're a hinge partner, but <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like the idea that like everyone you're dating on an app is there's no context there. So you're judging them on a different set of rules than you would if you happen to be like my friend's friends with this person who's kind of cute rather well, than like like kind of all the like specifics. I would say like, app. I've had really good experiences with Hinge and like I know couples that have like mm. met off of Hinge, but I think we just need both. You know, Mm -hmm. I think that we can't let dating apps completely replace the good old fashioned. I might have someone for you. Well, dating apps are for introverted men and extroverted women. Wait, that is true. But that's all all the couples I see off that app. We should give people homework this week to set their friends up on dates. Yeah. Yeah. And we should do the same because once a month I post my close friends. Can anyone set me up with a different gay guy in this town? People come back with two answers. No, I don't know a single person alive to be right for you. Or t- another one, it's like, I know this 40 year old guy. Um, he doesn't live in the city. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have anyone they can set me up with? No, right? No, because we don't. I tried to set you up one time and you ran away. With who? Oh, that one yeah. guy, that one party where I blacked out. <laughs> We were talking about sobriety earlier. Anyways. Um, <laughs> um, okay, well, Abby's subway journey. We've all had to go on a journey somewhere. For us, it was when we picked up the lighting kit from our podcast. For our podcast in Astoria. The thing about moving around Brooklyn, all, every single journey you're moving around Brooklyn, if it's not directly one mile from your house, it feels like Abby's journey going to North Brother Island. Going to Ludwig North Brother Island is such a good name also. <laughs> it, every time I say it, it makes me laugh. Or I smile. What is it? North Brother or North Brother? North Brother. North Brother. <laughs> like that's, that is a great name. No, it's really so is. funny. Daryl and North Brother Island. <laughs> Abby has to take the water taxi and it's only twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, Bevers goes it's and is like, there's literally a famous bridge. <laughs> <laughs> But it like is such a water. thing where it's like if you're on Apple Maps and your friend is on Google Maps and you guys are literally traveling to the same place from the same place, the journeys you go on, like, have you ever like I literally leaving this house, me and Evan are going to the same location. Evan leaves an hour before. They're taking three completely different trains from me. This says you have to. <laughs> I mean, us trying to get to Drake Jacob Reese Beach and we like oh literally went to Fidei to then take a ferry for an hour to then take a bus in Long Island to the beach yeah i've, I've done it myself <laughs> well you forgot about the shuttle <laughs> and i forgot about the shuttle <laughs> i've done the ferry i've done the ferry myself honestly it was lovely but it was 48 minutes late <laughs> <laughs> okay last thing in the broad and butter janine garofalo guest star- for them to get rachel josh and janine in one up okay. on the, in the third episode of the first season is crazy they're trying to they star stud it so people will pay attention and i did and i did well this is an amazing scene because by the way how, ask me how many times in my life I've used pet medicine to solve an ailment of mine. How many times, Evan? Twice, but they're both very significant. And you don't even, you've never had a house dog. No, but my friend's dad was a vet <laughs> in college and I kept getting strep throat. So um, I ha- kept taking dog strep throat medicine. Turns out I'm a toy Allegedly. Breed. No. We don't, we don't want to take away his veterinarian license. I'm not going to say who it is. Why were you getting strep throat medicine from a vet um oh because it was covid so it was like we couldn't really go to a pharmacy in a classic way or go see doctors because they were so overwhelmed so i did um just rely on my friends well my friend's stash of strep medicine for dogs well i mean doggy prozac is like literally in the zeitgeist like that's like a known tried and true thing but it's like to see alana get um her hands cuffed up so she doesn't scratch her hemorrhoids is camp no it's so funny that's that's a third beat that's a third beat if I ever saw it. <laughs> yeah, but I was taking the medication and it turned out, I was like, what dog is this for? They were like toy breeds. <laughs> I was taking like Yorkie medicine. <laughs> okay, well, that was amazing, Broad and Butter. Right, let's dissolve into our next segment after this break. And 
And we're, we're back, back from the break. Kira Sullivan, we have to know, what, what is, is your Broad, Broad City, City moment? moment? This one time, I was at Beauty Bar in, I think, my senior year of college. And I was, like, flirting with this, like, actually very cute, hot guy at the bar. And he told me his name. But he, and like, to be clear, Beauty Bar is not Dry Bar. It's, like, an actual bar that looks like a beauty Yeah, it's, it's like, kind of like, yeah. That's the whole, sorry, I should, thank you for clarifying. <laughs> um, but he was like, I will tell you my last name if you kiss me. So we made out and then I looked up his last name and it was, he, he had like a kidnapping charge <gasps> and I had to be like, what is this? And he was like, oh, like me and my friend like went to see our friend in the mental hospital and we like took her out, I guess, like on a drive. I don't know if they actually like tried to like, help their friend escape from a mental hospital but i guess they took her off the premises when they were not <laughs> more than they were not allowed to oh my god and but still like he was like it's gonna like don't look up my last name and then it turned out he had a kidnapping charge the oh one my surefire gosh. way for me to want to look up someone's last name is them telling me not to look up their last name i can't believe they stole their friend and why was their friend a child I don't think, no, their friend wasn't a child. So then how is he kidnapped at any age? age. Do you know how much comfort I take in the fact that it's, I'm too old to be kidnapped and now I'm realizing that's not true? I actually had that, I have a very flashbulb memory of that. Um, uh, Because when you're a kid, you're, you think that only children can be kidnapped. And then when I was like eight or nine years old, I saw this story about this like 20 something year old woman who was missing or like got kidnapped. And I was like, dad, I don't understand. Like she's an adult. (laughs) <laughs> and we we had to go on a walk and he basically had to explain to me he was like there's really bad men out there that will sometimes take women and it was this moment of me realizing that i was never going to be safe actually at any age oh my god and sorry not to get deep but like you you did bring up that topic and yeah. that was actually a really huge um flashbulb memory of me being like okay so i'm gonna be a fucking bitch for the rest of my life right you're this like shit i'm gonna have to not, clean out this shit is not fair um i kidnapped a child in elementary school she was a part of the after school program but i was like you've got to come to my house to hang out i'm a walker you know how people different people oh, are car yeah, riders yeah. or walkers i live super close so it's second grade and i just bring home brianna and i bring her through the door and my mom was like who is this child? <laughs> and I was like, this, this, I was like, this is my friend Brianna. You're going to love her. And she was like, do her parents know she's here? Like, why did you bring a child into the home? And I was like, yeah, we're just going to hang out. It's no worries. Like she usually stays after school, but she's going to be here. And my mom had to be like, you have to bring her back to the school. And I just remember being like, why is my mom using <laughs> such a mean tone? All I want to do is hang, hang out, out with my Bri- friend. Brianna. There was also a time, uh, a very famous incident where I got stuck in an elevator with uh, a group of friends like at probably midnight and it was me and this group of kind of like mutual friends but not close friends we were all leaving my friend's apartment um and it had kind of this old elevator it got stuck and one of the guys in there was being like very very drunk and very like aggressive and loud and I, as you know, step up in leadership situations. Of course. You've seen it happen in real time. <laughs> so like the elevator uh, gets stuck. Everyone starts freaking out. I'm immediately like, everyone, don't worry. I'm literally just going to call the fire department. They'll be here in four minutes. Because fun fact, um, the maximum amount of time it takes for a fire truck to reach you anywhere in the city is four minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's so simple. But this one guy is like, when you would open the kind of like, elevator doors you'd see this like really big metal door that had like a knob on it and he was like this is so it's like so stupid like we should just open that up and I was literally like you're gonna get yourself decapitated like no and he was being so aggressive and yelling and I was about like how stupid it is like we should just get out ourselves and I'm on the phone like with 911 like trying to give them our address so the fireman can come get us and he's screaming and I like literally cannot hear what the lady is saying and she can't hear me and it got to the point and like everyone else is kind of like freaking out as if we're um literally in like lord of the flies I'm the only one like leading the charge but he's 
being so loud, so aggressive, like still trying to like, still touching this big metal door. And I just snapped and I, I, I physically pushed him back. Oh. I went, shut the fuck up. I, I think my, I said, for once in your white boy life, shut the <laughs> fuck up. And, oh and, and I, I physically, it's the only time I've ever like physically pushed someone, but you have to understand this was like me trying to get us safely out of a situation. This like very drunk. Fight or flight, Kira this, choose fight. This drunk, aggressive man was sabotaging that and i had to be like also like by the way like when he was screaming all his other guy friends were like please listen to kira like everyone was like please stop and it but he was not going to stop but i so i had to take action and i literally had to be like shut the fuck up i've never snapped like that at anyone in my life <laughs> but i i did it you should have let him open the door so you got decapitated well i was You're like being too considerate i don't want trauma I don't want to see someone decapitated. Right. Yeah, you can't take that on. Right? Um, but that was also kind like of a how very... How did you resolute this? How did you get out of the elevator? The firemen came. Oh, thank God. That then, is you know, very broad city. One thing is that when you when you tell someone for once in your white boy life, just shut the fuck up, they get quiet it really fast. Up. <laughs> when you actually... When you physically... When you go there? When you physically push a man... Because he kept on trying to open the elevator door. So I, I was like... And he was also like, that's where I was. And he was screaming. So I like couldn't, um, I couldn't hear. So I literally was like, <laughs> get the fuck back. Well, um, Kira has a certain strength when she needs to have it. We have, and I think you, you guys have spoken. I do have a, an inner strength that is. Um, when needed. The thing is, and I love you with all my heart. It's only applied at the most needed moment. It is <laughs> <laughs> on an everyday basis. You might be below average in strength, but when Kira has her super strength, it comes out. It's, you know what? That's the thing is I have to be my energy, stamina, endurance right. on a day-to-day -day basis, much lower than average, very lazy. But that's because in times of crisis, you see mm -hmm. the super Kira emerge. This is, you, in this times, is what it is. I know, but genuinely, this is where the handle comes there, from. There has there have been so many incidents like that in my life where it's like, yeah, didn't somebody steal your phone and you said give it back? Yeah, that was that was the other my other Broad City moment. Me and Rain in Dublin, and someone took. I felt my phone leave my pocket. I turn around. There's like a man there, and I for viewers at home, if you're listening to this. So listeners, I turn around and the man man has a phone. It's like this way, holding it kind of in his hand. And I just, before I could even think, I just, I turn around and I was like, did you just take my phone? And then I see he has a phone in his hand. I snatch it out of his hand. I see it's my phone. I went, oh my God, you just tried to rob me. <laughs> and I, went, I, went, did you, I was like, did you just try to rob me? Oh my God, you did. You just tried to rob me. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. And that's when I got really brave. And I grabbed him. I was like, I'm calling Garda. Garda. I was like, which is, uh, Garda is like the police in Ireland. <laughs> and he was like, oh, no, no, it's just a joke. And he like ran away over the bridge and he like looked back at us. And I was like, and he, I thought that was another name for one of your grandparents no, for a second. Garda. But, um, <laughs> it, was, it, was so, it was so crazy though, because... I, I turn around to Rain after this happened, like after I genuinely have just taken my phone back from a assailant who tried to rob me. She was like, that was awesome. <laughs> but, but it was also so crazy because I just had so much adrenaline in my body, like mm -hmm. us both, yeah. that Rain was immediately recognized like 30 seconds afterwards. And we were trying to be nice. But we were both like literally just like jumping. Like I can't be princess. And baby she had girl to be right like, now. so someone just tried to rob us. Like we have to go <laughs> home. No, there is a certain thing. Girls on the internet, the way they will care about their phone, they will go to the end of their own life to get that phone back. Your story of you going and taking that phone out of the man in Ireland's hands, knowing it's yours, and you going to a cafe in McDonald's that we talked about in the first episode, it goes to show. This is why Amelia and I both clapped last night when a comedian asked, do you guys like social media? And we were only two people in the audience to clap. It's because we, we went and saw Hannah Gatsby's <laughs> show last night and they asked at a certain point, like, does anybody here like social media? And the whole audience hates it because it's bad for society. <laughs> And it's just me and Evan clapping yeah! <laughs> in the front. And they look over and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, that's so good. I will also say that the way that that night ended, 
that night in total is probably the Broad City moment because the robbery happens. Yeah. We go home. It's a treacherous walk home because everyone's drunk. It's St. Patrick's Day. Um, and we're waiting for my sister because we're staying for my sister. Like we're waiting for her to let us into her mm. grad student housing building. Mm-hmm. We're very clearly like two American girls like waiting for our friend to come home. <laughs> we're like sitting <sighs> on the street waiting for my sister and this girl is walking in the building and we ask her like oh and this is also like we were like harassed on the way home it was truly like a harrowing night Mm -hmm. we were like oh my god like i'm waiting for my sister can you can we please just like go in after you and wait in the lobby like we don't want to wait outside we're scared and she went it's not my job to let you in (gasps) and i will never forget the way rain slow turned to me and went what a cunt (laughs) because that was i think that was genuinely what like the kicker was is like all night we had been assailed by men and for at the very end of it for like a woman to be the one to like land the final blow it was insane probably like the most eventful insane night of my life (laughs) <laughs> that's a beautiful story i'm like Kira. angry i'm angry i know if i ever see her again if i ever see her guys, I want- you're out there well i think this brings us to our last segment i know thank okay, you yeah. for sharing your four or five broad city sorry no, i don't know how, it just <laughs> one no, story leads once to you another start, one story leads to another it's time for our final segment girl, girl get, get your, your glock, glock. It's, it's rapid, rapid fire, fire time <laughs> we're gonna ask you a series of rapid fire questions you need to answer them as quickly as you can don't think twice are you a schoolgirl or are you getting schooled, girl? I feel like I'm the professor. I'm like at a, at the <laughs> symposium. I'm Plato. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. Reduce, reuse, recycle, or Rihanna? Rihanna. Would you rather go down on Michael Buble or Janet Jackson? Mm, they're both beyond sex to me. But I'll say Michael Buble. And that's why you're pan not by. <laughs> Stop <laughs> spreading rumors about me. <laughs> what is the cutoff age for being a child bride? Hmm, well, right now I'm... 24 but i'm about to turn 25 so i think maybe whatever age i am and it depends on where i'm at <laughs> and, and, and at any given time at any given time <laughs> 10 years from now you could still be a child i could still be a child bride uh what are you screaming at the sky about oh yeah i forgot in this episode there's like three different people like with an over shot it's of them Stella screaming mo- to the sky moment. Stella! i think my my scream to the sky of late the one that i've been stewing about is like those faux intellectuals on leftist Twitter who like smoke cigarettes and have converted <laughs> to trad Catholicism <laughs> and every tweet you can't understand them and they think that makes them smart even though my Not mom trad Catholicism Nell Henderson once famously said and my mom is a genius by the way everyone and I that's like not a brag that's just like a fact like she is a she was on a show when she was a child called Kid Talk um <laughs> where smart kids would debate celebrities. Um, but anyways, one of her famous quotes is she said, um, smart people make complicated things sound simple. Dumb people make simple things sound complicated. And Boom. that's everyone on that side of Twitter. Boom. Oh my God. She really should be on child talk. Kid talk. And she was. <laughs> what medical question would you ask veterinarian Janine Garofalo? Probably not something about me i would ask a question about uh the inner workings of the dog perhaps like i would be like do they see me what's do uh, they janine do they see me you know i i would ask something about like i would try to get into the mind well, of we were a dog. trying to figure out the other day do dogs know gender and answer is yes yeah i would ask something like that mm. um fuck mary kill the following business moguls jay-z martha stewart bethany frankel mary martha stewart she's a homemaker she would be the perfect stay-at-home wife. She's not serving time in jail. Yeah, but you're not watching Bethany Frankel's TikTok close enough. Okay. Because that's a homemaker. I think I'm going to fuck Jay-Z and I think I'm going to kill Bethany Frankel. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I know that wasn't what you guys were expecting. I wish you would let a brunette live. But I really love a lot of Jay-Z's discography, actually. What? What? You're on the road tour watching Beyonce and Jay-Z. I'm listening and you're there to for Izzo. I'm listening to Big Pimpin'. <laughs> what? I'm, you guys don't understand. What was Jeremy's package? Clues to a mystery that he's going to solve? A manly handcrafted axe? A great belt? Or a flashlight? For him, if I didn't know what it actually was, I would think an axe. An axe, yeah. 30 or 100? 
100. What would make you kick a rotisserie chicken into the sky? I think there is a deep part of me that is kind of like Larry David coded. Like there is a part of my personality that is just like fed up. I could mentally be in a place to kick a rotisserie chicken into the sky at any given moment. <laughs> I, I could tap into that side of me. What an amazing podcast. <laughs> <laughs> thank on you that so amazing much for note. being on the pod, Super Oh, Kira. well, I, I only live here. And <laughs> thank you for being my dearest friends and hosting an amazing pod and having me on. This is we loved having you. Where can people find you besides at your house? They can, <laughs> um, they can find me doing stand up all across New York City. They can find me at Super Kira on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and I also have a Substack called the Kira Sullivan Substack as well. So I'm all over town. Oh, we yeah, can't wait are, for girl. your birthday party, girl. Love you. Love you. And. Uh, everyone, subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already. Kira's Corner. Kira's Corner. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to have a section for Kira's Corner. We're going to get into it on the Patreon today. And if you haven't rated or reviewed, please do it now. I will say I have seen the reviews where you guys use the keywords Broad City. Thank and you so for much. that, I am forever grateful. You are <laughs> an ally. <laughs>